I like a lot to do simulations and this is what I really like as a hobby as well. I, I love computers personally and I love really uh, all this kind of IT stuff and to see how computers can really do amazing things. Hello everyone, welcome to my new video. In this video, I'm gonna try to share with you one of my newest ideas that I had in order to make research and researchers a little bit more open and in order to help this uh, science dissemination. And for today's topic, I'm gonna try to uh, go deeper in the topic of soft actuators and soft robots simulations. And I have been working on this topic since already a few years. And it's still not finished. I think it's, a, it's, it's a still a, a, a baby, this topic, I will say. And I really just wanted to share it with you. And as I say, to take this idea of open research to YouTube, because I think YouTube now has become one of the main tools that engineers, students, researchers, and almost every people for almost every topic use YouTube as a research tool. And I think the world is changing and we researchers or engineers we need to adapt ourselves as well to this and it's not always like before like you used to download a pdf or you need to be a subscriptor to a journal or to a scientific uh, conference you know to get access to all this research i think now youtube is helping a lot in order to make the research open and to continue this topic of soft actuators and soft road simulations i'm gonna try to show to share with you one topic that i am really excited for so it's about simulations and stay tuned in the video if you want to know more about fem simulations of soft actuators so guys i am really excited to share with you and to show you and to present you i think one of the first uh, works in the whole soft robotics community that is considering the fluid structure interaction of additively manufactured soft pneumatic actuators and why is this important why is this fluid structure interaction uh, important in the thema of soft robotics and soft actuators is because there is a lot of research already been made in the areas of uh, soft actuators deformation uh, prediction or the or bending uh, bending behavior prediction and simulations and motion prediction and most of these uh, simulations that have been made have been made considering only structural mechanics uh, factors in order to to set up this kind of fem simulations and my idea since uh maybe i think three or four years ago was already that there is no way that we can really have a deep understanding of how so of, uh, of how soft actuator really works and soft robots are going to work or are going to to behave if we do not really consider the fluid interaction that is happening inside these actuators uh, when they are pressurized as if you are in the topic of soft actuators and soft robots you already know that most of these actuators are pneumatically operated by means of introducing an input pressure to the actuator which fills the cavities inside the actuator and this produces the motion depending on the geometry that that we are, that we have and i i said uh i think four years ago it started everything when i was uh, thinking there is no way that we can really understand how this happened or, or to predict how this really happened accurately or or some phenomena that we cannot really explain because we don't know what exactly is happening inside the soft actuators or the soft robots so i came with this idea a few years ago and it's still not finished it's still not even complete and i am sharing with you this topic which i wrote you can download this file that i'm going to go through this video i i will link it in the description of my video it is not peer reviewed it is not uploaded to a journal or as a preprint and I just wanted to share this with you and I do not really care if you take my work and tomorrow you publish it in, a, in another conference that I actually that's my that's the goal that's my objective of this video it's I want you if you are in the topic of soft robotics to to watch this video and if you are interested in the topic or if you are working on something similar you can keep digging in the topic I think that's one of the 
things that I really like more to share the things that I learn and that to share with you the things that I am working still on. So the topic, the, 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 the tema, the title of my preprint research, as I said, um, this, this paper has no exact values of the formation. This paper has not, is, has not been peer reviewed. It's just something that came really from my head and I put it on paper, I made some, I gave it some structure to the paper. And then I, I just wanted to share it with you because I have been working on this since years. And I want you to take a look, to comment my video and even to make research after this. That's the main idea of the video. I don't want to, to keep some intellectual property. I think that's one of the biggest errors of, of uh, nowadays researchers that they fight and they care a lot of intellectual property than that they forget even that the objective of make research is to do some good to the society. And if this topic can help you researchers out there to keep digging in the topic of soft uh, robots development and you really can take this into your research, I am really glad and I that's, that's my idea of this topic. So the title of this video is going to be the fluid of this paper is going to be the fluid structure interaction of additively manufactured soft pneumatic actuators. This has been uh, mainly developed by me and this was one of my students back in the days. She helped a lot in the research. Uh, I was the supervisor of uh, his master's thesis and this is a um, the, uh, I most of, of the work I, I made it by myself, but this student helped a lot in order to make the computations and some of the uh, theoretical research. So she is as well part of this of this research, and I am really thankful to her. So I'm gonna read the abstract, and then you can take a look as well. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to read the abstract, and then you can only download the paper if you are interested on it. But uh, what I really want to remark and is that this works i'm going to read this part that this work presents the first 3d two-way fluid structure interaction fem simulation model for an additively manufactured soft pneumatic actuator and this paper and this video is going to be about discussing the challenges and opportunities of how such methods could provide uh, concluding remarks for computational fluid dynamics in the soft robotics research. As I said, until we don't, do not get a better understanding of what is happening inside such actuators, I think we are still going to be one step further of a standardization of development of soft actuators and soft robots. And we are going to still uh, be surprised of the results of uh, testing and uh, using soft this kind of this kind of uh, actuators and robots uh, I'm, I'm going to read this again and it says it needs to be remarked that this work has been not made to exactly calculate or predict the formation results of pneumatic nets or to establish which fem approach is more accurate than other this work has not been made with the objective of show to you exact results or numbers when uh, most of the works uh, published in the research field are design and manufacture, this work has been developed to try to answer the big question of pneumatically actuated soft actuators and soft robots. What is really happening inside a pneumatic network when it's pressurized? What other phenomena may occur when analyzing the fluid flowing inside the actuator cavities? How could this lead to open more questions regarding pneumatic control, systems development for soft actuators and soft robots? And then the big question is, do we really control at all what is happening inside of a soft actuator? And this is, this is my objective of this whole work idea is, as we said, as I said, in order to get a better understanding of the real actuation inside of a soft actuator. And as I say, the objective of this paper and video is to describe and discuss the challenges and opportunities of a fluid structure interaction simulation model for a soft pneumatic actuator. This is not a one-way interaction model. This is a two-way, 3D, 100% couple. And I think, to be honest, this, this probably is one of the first in the world, maybe the first. 
So the materials and methodology that is going to follow this research is going to be a two-way fluid structure, a structure interaction approach, and it's going to be. Uh, it is you can you can see it here. We have a and mechanical is this work is going to be. Is, it has been worked out with ANSYS simulation, and we are using the ANSYS mechanical package, and we are using the CFX ANSYS package. We are using the a system coupling, and we are coupling both system in a two-way uh, in a two-way system, and this is how it's, it is like generally working. Yeah, and the I'm 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 going to skip this. As I say, this is not this is not. Even I, I would say correct 100%. There is still a lot of work. As I, I work, I, I wrote this very fast, not because I wanted to, to make it fast. It was because I wanted to share it with you and to give you the idea and the work. How is this going to work? This is basically going to work like we have a system coupling, which is the going to be which is going to be the one that is in charge to join the structural the structured domain and the fluid domain and this is going to be mixed together in a system coupling and we are going to calculate for the structural uh, we are going to calculate the structural mechanics and we are going to, co to compute the fluid mechanics and we are going to put them together in order to transfer some of the data from one to another and vice versa from uh, from one domain to the other one and from this other domain to the uh, back to the to the first domain this is how a two-way uh, coupling system usually works you get some data as results from the first system you put it as an input of the second from the second system and the output of the second system goes back as an input to the first system and this makes the whole cycle and the loop to get a better uh, accurate model uh we are going to follow this this uh, this method and then the material use for my actuators if you read my my papers before I am we are using a silicon based elastomer that can be additively manufactured it is offered by Keyens and it is the ARG1L uh, the material is characterized by geo models and all these things I'm not going to make them now because I already made them in my video tutorials before if you have more questions about the specific details of how to make the structural mechanics at least simulation you can take a look to my other videos it is also made in Abacus as well so how you need to imagine this is that the transient structural is going to be work uh, you need to imagine the actuator that is going to be in this direction hanging from uh, from the top hanging from this place i'm going to show you later uh, you need to imagine that the actuator is going to be hanging in this position yeah and then it's going to be bent in in a, yeah in, to, in the x c plane so in order to make this to make this work you need to have in the structural mechanics setup you need to as well to mesh the solid we are, we need the as we are in this uh, small figure we illustrate we need the fluid domain and we need the structure domain which means we need a solid body for the structure domain and we need a continuous body as well for the fluid you can make this really easy subtracting the internal cavities material that you do not have of course and creating an, a, an independent body of the inside cavities so this is the solid body of the structural that is going to be used for the structural mechanics you already know it as i said if you watch my videos or, or if you are in the topic of soft robotics act or soft actuators and this solid domain uh, is going to be me uh, i meshed in a 10 node nonlinear quadratic tetrahedron mesh with a maximum 3 mm element global size. Uh, proximity functions for face and edge are used. And the fluid body, very important, I will show you later, the fluid body is not going to be meshed in the structural mechanics of ANSYS, only the solid body. And then, uh, one of the most important things for fluid structure interactions is that you need to have an interface between both domains which is going to be the one in charge of the system coupling and this interface as you already know is going to be the internal walls of the actuators i made a, a cut here in the middle you know to show you the internal faces that are hit, marked in red and these uh, red surfaces are going to act as the interface between fluid and solid which means that all the calculations inputs and outputs 
of each domain are going to be transferred in this interface and are going to be calculated here. Uh, the I'm going to tell you later about what we are expecting from from each of these interfaces and and domains. Yeah. So. Um, in contrast to normal FEM ANSYS simulations or Abaco simulations, you only need to set up basically the mesh, the gravity, in case, of course, gravity is, is affecting the whole model in the structural as well in the fluid mechanics, and the interface. There is no pressure to define. This is very important. We are not defining air pressure as in normal typically FEM simulations. We are not defining air pressures. We are not giving any force in order to actuate the, the, the actuator. We expect to get this force parameter out of the fluid mechanics. Yeah, the fluid mechanics, we expect to have this force and this force is going to be used as an input in the interface to be transferred to the solid body. That's what we are expecting. So if you are if you are still following me, then we need to define the fluid dynamics. The fluid dynamics, for example, this is a this is a view of the internal cavities that they, 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 there is no internal cavities body. Uh, as I say, I subtract uh, the or subtract or intersect. I, I I I don't know exactly how depend on the software you have. Yeah, you need to intersect or subtract the internal cavities, and then you you can have the the, the, the this, this a solid body for the fluid. And this is how it looks. The mesh was made here really really fine, and um, the curvature curvature is also captured to generate a finer mesh. Uh, yeah, you, you need the curvature element size of 3 millimeter is defined and a growth rate adaptive sizing function of 1.9 millimeters. Uh, the fluid domain mesh has, for my case, 1,001,049, uh, 1, 166 elements, uh, nodes and elements uh, 725,204, which is, it's, it's okay. I mean, you, you already need a, a, a nice computer and a few days to compute this. Uh, now that I say this, uh, it is very important to remark that this simulation, at least the one that I'm going to show you in the video and in this preprint paper, it is not finished the simulation. It is computed like a very small amount just to show you, just enough to show you the idea of my video, of my research. Uh, complete simulations, uh, I, I have complete simulations of this, but because of, I still do not analyze perfectly the, the results, the complete results. I just want to show you this as well. And I want to, to transfer you the idea of what we are doing here, not exact results or complete results. Uh, we are defining time steps of as uh, slow as 0 0.001 seconds. This needs to be very, very low because uh, the, the system of ANSYS now is getting quite complex, to be honest. Now it's getting complex. And if you define bigger step increments, I tried a lot. There is no convergency and you get errors. Uh, the, the important thing is that uh, boundary details, the fluid surfaces are defined as walls with the mesh motion controlled by the system coupling. And now you can see here how the inlet is not treated as an inlet, it's treated more like an opening with a pressure value that I am giving with an equation in ANSYS that at each step is going to increase 100 pascals for each step. So we just, we keep a, like a step quasi ramp function as a, as a opening. And this is the equation that I am giving. And now the system coupling, this is, this is probably the most important thing of about, about this work and of the whole idea that I am, I am looking to, to, to share with you. We have two participants for these simulations. We have the fluid flowing, we have the fluid flow, and we have the transient structural. The input for the fluid flow is going to be mesh displacement. The output that we're expecting of the fluid flow is going to be force. And then the input of the transient structural is going to be force, and then the output of the transient structure is going to be the mesh displacement. And 
if you see here, now I have the interface information for you. We have the uh, site one and site two. We have fluid flow, CFX, and we have transient structure. We have the data transfer one and we have data transfer two. Data transfer one is going to be uh, the target is going to be the second one. And the target of the first one is going to be the second one. Source variable force to incremental displacement. Yeah, and then it's going to be force and mesh, mesh displacement. And this is, go this is going to be as well vice versa in the other side. And this is how we do it. Uh, this is a uh, this is a force as well is going to create a displacement. And this displacement is going to be is going to create a mesh displacement, and this is going to be transferred again. Yeah? And this is how we do like like the the whole transfer of the system. Uh, very important is that the mesh is going to be in motion, and the mesh needs to be calculated with the last step. For my case, and it took me honestly maybe two years. <laughs> I was not working 100% of this, that needs to be, to be clear, but I invest a lot of time, days, hours, nights working on this. And then the mapped area that I got after a lot of really research about the mesh is 100% of map, uh, mapped area, mapped elements 100% and mapped nodes are 100%, which means that the mesh in the fluid and the mesh of the so solid domain in the interface are matching 100%, which is very important in order to get at least a chance to get convergence. As I say, the new net is going to be in this direction, it's going to be uh, tested in this direction. And as I said, uh, to compute up to uh, 20 kilopascals with 100 pascal increment size and a step size of 0 0.001 seconds, Using at my computer has 36 cores, 36 physical cores, 72 threads. I do not use threads. I do not use hyper, hyper threading. Um, running at 3.5 gigahertz with a total uses of 100 gigabytes of RAM, approximately. And there is no GPO acceleration for this case because there is partial pivoting used. And partial pivoting is not accepted by GPU and there is no GPU for this. I couldn't made it. Maybe I need to work a little bit the, the setup, but as I said, I already spent uh, years working on this and uh, maybe later. Yeah. And which the, to compute this, it took approximately 20 hours, 20 hours to compute just a, just a small, small increment, really small increment. And this in comparison with Abacus, Abacus takes around 30 minutes, 20 hours, fluid structure interaction model, 30 minutes Abacus. But as I said, my idea is not to press to, to discuss which one is better. My idea is to, to show you this fluid interaction happening inside of a self actuator. Yeah. And I just want to show you just uh, straightforward. Who is the results? This is in blue and red is the deformated pneumatic network after the fluid interaction model. And the one in gray is the one of the uh, normal structural mechanics and simulations. This is the state at 6.8 kilopascal, which is the, the one that I'm going to show you in this preprint and in this video. It's very small, but you already can see the effects. That, that, that was my point of everything. You can see there is a lot of uh, difference. As I said, there is no discussion about which one is better or which one is more accurate. It's about showing you this why this 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 reason of of fluids inside actuators yeah and just to show you here how is the inside of my actuator we have a small channel which is like a ellipse and then we open to the cavities and then as well the channel this is as well an internal cut detail view and then we are going to go to the results as I said, if I'm going so fast, you can always, always take my paper from ResearchGate. I'm going to link the, 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 the link to my ResearchGate account, and then you can take a look to this. Uh, the result is that I it is it is successfully being simulated using a two-way three a two-way three D fluid structure interaction model, and uh, the resulting simulation model consists in a fully developed fluid flow 
and a transient structural interface participants. The fluid flow generated forces that had been successfully transferred to the new net structure walls. The new net has been deformed accordingly to the generated force. Displacements of the new nets had been transferred to the fluid flow domain, change, changing in a closed loop the boundary condition of the models. Yeah? This is this is this is the idea of everything that you loop back this deformation and this is going to change in turn the fluid which is going to change as well the parameters and it's not just as you think ah yeah put pressure and then it's going to move you there is something happening inside and there is a lot of surprises always ah my actuator broke or this actuator inflated different or the controller is not reacting the controller is not working um, I do not exact. I, I always have deformation uh, problems. It's because we, even if we know a lot by making tests, if we never do, we really investigate the causes of everything. It's still missing something, and you can see here that the figure ten shows the complete velocity overview at the opening for the complete simulated time. You can see that in the opening, the velocity is not constant. Everything is changing, but I can show you now. Uh, these are some images you can take a look later in the in the paper i'm gonna go i'm gonna bring you now to the simulation model now this is it this is in ansys this is the ansys cfx post and here is the actuator as you can see there is i'm not showing still anything and now let's for example bring the streamlines this is in the uh, time step 0. 001 like really just in the beginning of the actuation and as you can see there is already the streamlines with streamlines is like the fluid where uh, this is like the fluid you can see how the cavities are being filled but not not all of them and not really a lot uh, as i said this is just streamlines do not think like ah yeah but the, the chamber is still not not full these are streamlines and this is the behavior of the in the just at the beginning you need to mind that the, the new net is like this and just at the beginning of of the simulation it just came inside here and it uh, went directly to the to the chamber and then it went uh, it filled up a little bit the chamber and then went to the to all the chambers but as you can see just in the beginning almost in the beginning of the actuation there is not really still fluid in the chambers uh, otherwise in the main channel yeah this is how it looks this is very important because for example for designers when you are constructing and developing a new design of a new a new geometry you can already take a look that uh, there is a lot of contact and stresses probably are going to be in the first chamber when the where the inlet is uh, is there and this is how it looks at the beginning so now let's take a look to the there is a still no pressure there is a, this is the this in blue is the pressure that i just put here this pressure inside the cavities is still zero because there is a still not pre accumulated pressure or force in the walls um you can see here now uh, i'm going to hide the streamlines now you can see the velocity so velocity is propagated and this is how it looks and if you take a look here you can see that whole velocity in the deepest cavities of the actuator is not really present which you say jorge but this is the beginning of the actuation yeah that's why i'm doing this uh this is the whole idea of everything to get to know what is really happening inside the actuators you can see here how velocity uh, in the at the end of the actuator is not really present which means a lot yeah there is a lot of already design rules for this that can have a, an influence then let's bring now the another middle step as i say this simulation finished at 0 0.068 second which is almost nothing but already uh, makes a difference in the deformation let's put it i don't know maybe in the beginning like 0 0.026 it's going to take a while because it's loading the whole parameters this is not like a ooh, really nice simulation it takes time and the system as i said is very complex and my computer is a is a is an amazing computer let me tell you i have i have uh 
a very I have 36 cores of CPU here. I have a this is a dual core. It's a dual Xeon workstation from HP, and it's still uh, struggling to compute this. And now let's see here in the in a middle point. This is at the time 0.026, and here we have accumulated pressure already. We have some accumulated pressure, as you can see. That is about. Uh, it needs to be about I don't know uh, 20 yeah uh, 2.7 kilopascals which is around here this color and we can see here how it is right which means that there is already pressure accumulated in the walls that means that and if you remember we did not apply pressure to the st structural mechanics model this pressure is generated by the fluid against the walls which is what we are looking for uh for here just for information i am just plotting in some planes to make it easy for you to see and if you see as well now the velocities again velocities they still present kind of the same behavior uh, high velocities in the inlet of course and then uh, i will show you now another thing which is very very important which is the turbulence and then the low velocities at the end of course if we want to see this from another uh, perspective let me try to show you here the mm. this is not the one mm. I don't remember whether I have the otherwise I can show you later in my paper uh, what I want to show you is actually how for example this is the eddy turbulences and you can see that the main chamber is already being hit really hard of uh, because of turbulence turbulence is uh, most of the is happening in the in the main channel here in the walls of the main channel this is how it looks the deformation let me uh, hide some of these things in order to show you better and as i say this is the formation made uh, because of the fluid there is not at all structural mechanics involved here it's everything generated by the fluid and you can take a look to the pressure now the pressure the pressure inside the cavities this is very good to know that the pressure inside the cavities it is like generally constant um through the whole model and this is very important at least we know that the pressure it is uh, transferred like almost equally in the whole model because of the uh, yeah, gases no they they they, they tend uh, by low to fulfill all the space uh, inside of a container and which is at least very good the the other thing i don't know if i can show you here but in my paper i can show you is that for example, if you can take a look here, this is the this is the average uh, velocity profiles in just in the outside of the inlet, which uh, which in blue is uh, yeah lower velocities. These are vectors, and yeah, small and blue vectors are like small in magnitude yeah and the uh, in color is the the as well the the velocity the intensity of the velocity and the magnitude is increased increased you can see here how the velocity works and you can see how here how in the middle of the chamber the velocity it just go a little bit crazy and the thing is like Jorge but this doesn't matter yeah maybe not if for the main as you can see that in the main cavity everything is like almost blue and small which is good but when it is then trending to go inside the main cham channel again now it develops a lot of uh, different velocities in magnitude which creates turbulence this is this is the main this is the main idea of behind this as well and as you can see here the velocities are highly increased which creates turbulence and it creates not more like pressure but it creates more stress in the walls and this can lead to a, a unexpected results because 
and this can lead as well to define later guidelines or help or tips in order to design main channels of soft actuators in order to avoid this kind of uh, change in velocities of the fluid and, and generation of turbulence. Now you can see that in the main channel, how the, the velocity is still high, but it's stable in direction at least. And now you can see how after that in the in the normal uh, as well in the outside of the cavity the in the outside of the main channel the velocities are increased again but in the same direction at least which is also good but they are very high and then you can see here how in the middle of a channel the everything is stable which is very good and in the same direction at least as well here you can see how in the middle point of the actuator alongside the main cavity the big cavity everything's stable and not really a lot of velocity which means uh, that the fluid is already contained and is not really in motion and which is good as well and then let's take a look uh, to the to the important thing this is what that what i want to show you that you can see that oh in the latest cavities and deepest cavities velocity is almost not present and it gets like a kind of a yeah stable uh, stabilization in the in the velocity profiles which is also very good and as i said the, the it means that the fluid is not in motion or almost uh, velocity zeros at the end of the of the and the deepest cavities uh, and you can see here in the maybe you cannot even see it but in the latest channel in the far further channel of the of the new net there is almost zero velocity like almost zero velocity which means that the fluid is already uh, not in equilibrium but it's not really changing in motion at least here is just like a, a general overview of the whole uh, actuator at the zero 6.8 kilopascal pressurization level let me put it a little bit that you can see it completely and this is how it looks now velocities in the beginning are really really high and then for example here in the main in the first entrance of the of the first channel then it goes crazy the velocity profiles and then goes stable in the in the end which means that it's, it's not like ah oh, yeah i just press 30 kilopascals and it's going to inflate the new unit something is happening and this something is happening is the thing that we really need to, to keep investigating yeah so this is most like the this is like the whole idea of my research in fluid structure interaction and as i said it is still not accurate there is still a lot of research to be made i i really uh, encourage you to make this happen if you are out there and you are interested on this topic uh, and as I say, the velocity profiles, as I wrote here, could lead to a better understanding of how the turbulent fluid flow present of the pneumatic networks act and the knowledge of critical zones where a stress distribution trend to be higher are particularly important. And then engineers and designers can then optimize their designs based on failure prediction models or on the side deformation behavior no because they already know how the fluid acts and maybe they create designers can create different geometries inside the the actuators to make this fluid to flow in a better way and this is my main this is the this is the main idea as i said behind this here you can see as well streamlines and how the pressure is increased how velocity at the end is almost as well uh, non and this is very interesting if you really are interested in the topic, just contact me. I am I am going to be more than glad to share it with you all what I made. My my intention is not to hide something or to to, to keep something for me, is is to share it with you. And I am really excited that finally after for a lot of years I had the courage to present this to the people because the thing is a lot of research taught me and that Jorge, if it, if if it is not complete, don't do it. If it is not complete, don't publish it, because they they care a lot about their reputation and what other people is going to say about them, and they really a lot of people really do not care about making research to 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 share. 
they are just looking about money and make grant applications and get projects and they do not even care for, of anything just 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 they just do research a lot of people just to make research and, and make money i i don't know and i i i really glad that i i at least got the courage to to publish this and as i said and i wrote in this in any page of this paper this work is not peer reviewed and it is not intended to be submitted to any scientific journal or conference proceedings this work presents personal advances that i am interested for in the topic and this work objective is not to present exact or correct values and or results incomplete equations and or figures is known by the authors a very intensive state of the art research has been made since 2018 even if this works lacks of reference i have made a lot of research guys if you are interested in just ask me this work is not written perfectly and it's not correct and i know that i just want to share with you and a final version of this work will be followed up in consequently months i hope so this is i say this is my 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 personal research and i am really glad to share finally this with you even if it is not correct and it's not finished i want you to take use of this and i don't want to have it it under my table for, for and because then it's old research and and I, I don't want, as I say, I don't want to profit of, of, of for this. I don't want to publish it or something like this. I just want to share it with you. Yeah, this is my whole objective of this. Share this with you. So now I'm going to show you how the how this coupling kind of works. But I cannot really show you how it works. But this is, for example, I don't know if you know the ANSI system coupling. And I want to show you here, for example, uh, the, tan the transient structural uh, yeah, as I said how this works transient structurals co calculate one part of the simulation and then you can see it here that the how it starts is that the fluid the fluid starts the simulation and then the transient structural receive the force in f in x s y and z and then you calculate the structural uh, against this force and then you send the displacement increment to the fluid and then if you take a look to the fluid here i ha i don't have uh, yeah, it's here the fluid and then the fluid take this mesh increment let me try to to show you I cannot. Uh, there is a lot of iteration, guys. There is a lot of iterations. And if you take a look here, for example, then you get this X, Y, and Z displacement. And then you use them in order to calculate the fluid flow again. And then vice versa. You finish the fluid flow and then you send the force to the trans to the transient structure and it loops again this is a two-way fluid structure interaction and it is happening it's not real time of course and it takes a lot of time and it's very compute intensive but it it gives you a quite deeper understanding of what is happening inside and this is how it works and I, as i made research to be honest there is still i think no one that have been made this complete and it's not that I wanted to be the first one, it's that I really wanted to, to as I said, to share it with you. Because it's something very interesting and it's something that people not is not really still working on it. And this why, why it's happening, that's the thing that we need to keep researching. So I hope you like the video. I hope you have something, even if it is long, a long video, but for sure you are going to get something out of it. And I hope it helps you if you have maybe a smaller models or different quite small that you want to try and you want to, to, to use this model, you can contact me. I will do my best to answer you and share with you the model. I do not want to keep something for myself. Uh, please do not take this as a complete research, as I said. It. It's just something personal that I want to share with you. And I hope you like the video and I hope if you are doing research out there in fluid dynamics, 
And if you are interested on this topic, you can contact me and then maybe we can do something together or maybe you can just continue this research. So thank you very much, guy. I cannot really tell you how happy I am to be able finally to share this with you. So if you like the topic of uh, computational fluid dynamics, soft actuator simulations, and you really found this helpful and interesting, don't hesitate to contact me, like the video, and see you until the next one.